Hello, my name is Sister Desiree Anne Marie. I am a Felician sister, and today I'm going to teach you how to make what's called a knotted or cord rosary. Uh, in the description of the video, I'll also have links to let you know where I find my products and what kinds of things I like to purchase so that you'll know where to find what you need to make these as well. We're going to take a moment now to look at our tools. So first we have our rosary cord. There are a few different sizes. I prefer size 36. It's a little thicker. Creates a nice sturdy rosary. But there's also size 21 cord, which is a little bit thinner and creates a bit more of a dainty rosary. If you look at the cord next to each other, you can see the difference in thickness. So the size 36 compared to the size 21 is a little bit thicker, you can see. But both are durable and both are good to use. Just to show you a comparison of the rosaries, this is the 36 next to the 21. So you can see the 21 is a little bit shorter and a little thinner. Knots are a little bit smaller. But again, both are good. In addition, you're going to need a pair of scissors, very important at the end. A lighter will also be important at the end or matches either one. And if you want, a little tea light will also be useful, but again towards the end. You don't need to worry about pre-cutting your cord if you order from certain websites, but some you will have to cut your own and in that case you're going to need to measure out five yards of cord. If you want, you'll also need a knotting tool which you can purchase on Our Lady's Rosary Makers and those websites will be in the description of this video. Not everybody likes to use a tool, I just like to use my hands, but in this video I'll show you how to do both the tool and your hands. I also, because I use my hands, use band-aids because some places on my fingers get rubbed a little bit raw, so I put those on to protect them. Once in a while I use new skin as a way to protect my hands, but that's in the areas that maybe don't get as much use on my hands. Um, and then sometimes I use athlete's tape, but it gets a little sticky, so I prefer the band-aids instead. All right, I think we're ready to get started. As you can see, I've unraveled my string a bit. I've also got my band-aids on. And I'll show you the first few knots with a tool and then the next few with just my hands. First you want to give yourself a little bit of space at the end of your string because you'll need to tie one last knot at the end here. So usually to measure that out, I just wrap it around my finger a couple of times, maybe a few times, and that way you know you've got enough space to tie one more knot. To tie our first knot, we'll take our tool We'll hold the string against it, and then we'll start by putting the string behind and then wrapping it around. And when we wrap it around, it might be a little tough, but we want to make an X. So if you can see back there, you've got a little X with your cord. Now you want to wrap your cord around two more times, one and two. So you've got three strands here all next to each other. So you can see they're all in a line here. They all cross over this one original strand. Now what we want to do, we're going to let this little short piece hang. We're going to take the long one, so the end of the very long side, we're going to put it back through here and out through the opening of the tool. So it goes right through underneath there. And then just pull it all the way through. So it's going to be pretty long. Pull it all the way through. And 
once you've got that long string all the way through your three you're going to take the tool out I know it's a little bit scary but then you want to tighten your knot so this is your knot you want to make sure that these three strands stay where they are so you can kind of pull these two strings and it tightens your three strands okay I also do like a pull and a push motion and there's your first knot so you see all three strands stayed where they are that creates a nice little knot if they got crisscrossed that's okay you can leave the knot as is or you can untie it and try again now our next knot we're going to want to start close to the first one we tied okay because this first knot begins our first decade of the rosary so these knots need to try and stay next to each other all right again we've got our three strands crossed over that original strand that went behind the tool and we're going to let this short piece hang again find the end of the really long side and through this end out of the opening of the tool slide it under and pull that all the way through takes a long time because remember we've got about five yards of cord typically that leaves us with a little bit at the end but that's not a problem we would rather have a little more than we need than a little less okay once we've got it all the way through again take out the tool and tighten your knot so like I said I kind of do a pull and a push I pull with these two fingers and push with these two fingers and you want to keep it pretty close to your first knot of course give yourself a little bit of space between that should be kind of the distance you have for the next eight knots because again we're doing the first decade so these are your first two knots one more knot I'll show you with a tool and then I'll show you with my hands so again place the string or your knots on the tool put the string behind your tool bring it around the front make a little X well, sometimes the string doesn't like to cooperate but we're going to make an X then wrap it around two more times right next to the one you just did so you've got your three strands I kind of hold them back here with my finger while I find the edge of my really long piece here it is put this through the back going out of the opening of your tool and pull it all the way through and once we have it all the way through as we've been doing we take the tool out and then we try to make sure this knot ends up pretty close to the second one you tied. Okay, again, pulling and pushing. Oops. Okay, there we go. You've got three very nice knots. And if you don't have three very nice knots, it's all right. No one's judging you. You can keep trying or maybe you can try doing it with just your fingers if you need to untie a knot and retie it and pause me that's fine do what you got to do but next I'm going to show you with my hands alone so your finger then will act as the tool it will go against your cord or against your knots and you start by putting the string behind your finger you'll wrap around and make your X again two more times around one two so you have a total of three strands 
when I take the cord off my finger, I hold it with my left hand in these fingers. Now you'll just put the string, you'll find your long end, same direction through the back out of the opening there, and you'll pull it all the way through just as we've been doing. And now you'll tighten this knot. Pull and push motion next to the one we just tied. Now we've got four. So sometimes to do an extra tightening, you can see I kind of wrap the string around my pinky. That's why I have a band-aid there. And then just pull it a little tighter. There we go. We'll do that again. So your finger is acting as the tool. The knots go against it. Put the cord behind your finger. Bring it around front. Make your X. And then two more times next to that one. One, two. So you've got your three strands. Pull it off. Take the long piece. So if you don't want to find the end of your long piece, because sometimes that takes forever, I just get a piece of the cord next to me and then push it through here. And then I just pull that through. It's a little bit faster. Actually, it's a lot faster. <laughs> and there we go. And sometimes, instead of doing my push and pull motion, which works, sometimes I pull underneath this first string from the bottom and that tightens these two others. Okay, And then this string, as I hold those down, will tighten that one. It might be a little complicated. Maybe you want to stick with the pull and push method and that's fine. But if you want to try that, I'll show you again. Again with my finger. Go behind your finger. Make your X. Two more times around. Take it off. Then push the string through. Pull it all the way. And I'll show you again. I take this first one and I pull from underneath it. Underneath. And that tightens these two. But see these two are trying to cross? Make sure they don't do that. That'll get your knot all crooked. So you want to keep the strands right next to each other where they were. This string tightens that. And then you tighten your knot. Alright, so I've shown you three knots with a tool and three knots with my finger. I'm going to go ahead and finish. You want four more knots. So keep trying. Get ten next to each other because our ultimate goal is to make first this first decade. So you've got your first six knots, tie four more, and then I'll tell you what to do next. So keep leaving this short piece alone and continue on the longer side. Now that you have your ten knots, Two, four, six, eight, ten. I always like to double and triple check because sometimes I tie an extra knot or not enough knots. Next, what we're going to do is tie our hour father. So you've got your first ten knots, your decade. Now we're going to tie the hour father knot. As you can see, you want a little extra space between the decade and the hour father than you have between your Hail Marys. So when we tie our Our Father, and I'll show you first with the tool, we can start a little distance away from the knot we tied with the Hail Mary. And this time, same thing, you bring it around the back, make your X, but you want four strands all together. So you're going to do three more times around. Two, 
three, four. So you see instead of having three, you've got four. And that just gives you a little bit of a thicker knot. I don't know if you can even tell, but it just shows that the Our Father is different than the Hail Mary. If you want to keep it at three strands, that's perfectly fine. Or if you want to try five strands, you're welcome to do that too. It's up to you. And then again, we find the long edge, put it through our tool, out the opening, pull it all the way through. Well, this piece doesn't belong. All right. Take out the tool and give yourself again a little bit of space between that Hail Mary and the Our Father. Not too much space, you might end up with a super long rosary, although nothing wrong with that either. Very nice. So now we have our first decade and our first Our Father, and now we're going to do our second decade. We'll give ourselves the same amount of space between these two as we'll give during in the next knot. So as you see, that's your Our Father, some space between. So now we do our Hail Mary. Go behind, make your X, twice around, finding that end. So fun, isn't it? With five yards of cord. Let's see. Towards the end it gets shorter, don't worry. All right. All the way through. And if you find that I'm going too fast at any point, feel free to pause me, do what you need to do. and I won't be offended. All right. All the way through, okay. So next knot, we want to try and give the same space we did between these two. I just kind of eyeball it. Try to keep that. That looks about right. Good, so as we begin the next decade, it's going to look just like this one, where you've got 10 knots pretty similar in distance to each other. I'll start with you by doing the second one, and then we will move on quickly to our second hour father knot. All right, so you have two knots, you need eight more, 10 knots. Fantastic. So now we have our first decade, first Our Father, second decade. Now we are here going to create our second Our Father. When we do that this time, and I'm using my finger four times around, remember, or three or five, whatever you choose. This time I have a place to measure the length between the Hail Mary and the Our Father. So I go back to the first spacing that I did. This keeps the spacing on my rosary fairly even, and that way when it's done, you can see the uh, decades and the Our Fathers pretty much line up. So when I tie that knot, I then hold it up to this area, and I try to keep the distance about the same. So you can see same kind of length. Now again, when I tie my next Hail Mary knot, I can measure from that same place. Whoops, sometimes little knots tie themselves. That's fun. All right, tie in that knot. Hold it up near this one and tighten it. Try to keep it nice and even. 
Very nice. If you weren't able to keep it even, don't worry. You can always undo and redo your knots, or you can leave it as is. If this is your first rosary, or even your second or third, or a hundredth, it's not going to be perfect. I've been doing this for about 10 years now, so it's very easy for me at this point, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, especially when you're beginning, or maybe ever, and that's all right. Now we're going to tie nine more knots to create our third decade. Now we have three decades, and we've got two Our Fathers, so in, now we need our third Our Father. Just as I did with the second Our Father that I tied, I went back and measured from the first one. I'm going to keep going back to measure from the first one. I don't measure from this one because, as we know, a copy of a copy doesn't turn out as well as a copy of the original. So we're going back to the original to measure ourselves and make sure we keep it pretty even with our spacing. And when we tie our Hail Mary after that one, we do the same thing. Measure from our original. Very nice. And now we are ready to tie our fourth decade. Pretty close to the end. Pretty exciting. Now we have one, two, three, four decades. We're going to tie another Our Father. And as you may have noticed, the string isn't so long anymore, so it doesn't take forever to go through the knot. All right, measure it again against our original spacing and then our next Hail Mary this is going to be our last decade we won't quite be done after the decade where the rosary actually begins is where we are going to end so tie one more decade of knots so we are on the last decade here and then we just have these knots to do and that's it okay now that we have one two three four five decades with an hour father in between each of those so we've only got four we're going to close our rosary we're going to be tying this knot now. It's pretty much the same as the knots we have already been tying, but we're going to use both of these strings instead of just one. I'll show you first with the tool and then I'll undo the knot and show you with my finger. So we'll put our cord, our rosary, against the tool, put these two cords behind, Oops. Don't let them cross. We want to keep them nice and next to each other. We'll make our X with both cords. And then we're only going to go one time around. Just like that. So it looks like you have four strands, but you only went twice around. You want to keep them nice and lined up. All right. And then we'll put both cords through the tool. I'll do the long one first because it's a little bit more complicated than the short one. Long side all the way through. And now the short one. Kind of try to move that out of the way. Can you imagine doing that with the long side? Mm -hmm. All right. Get that short one out, and now we'll take the knot off the tool, and you'll tighten by pulling both of these and pushing all of these. Okay, and again you want to try and keep those strands next to each other, 
and then you'll tighten it. I'm not going to tighten it all the way because now I'm going to undo it and show you just with my hands. But oh, before I do that, you want to give yourself some spacing, kind of like you did with your Our Fathers. You can't really, well, you could measure it if you want. Um, to show the distance between your Hail Marys and your Hail Holy Queen. That is the Hail Holy Queen knot. Now, just going to undo it real quick. So we can, for those of us working with just with our hands, know how to do that. All right. So just like we did with the tool, put the both strands behind your finger Wrap them around to make an X one time, and then one more time to give yourself those four strands. Take it off and hold on to all of those strands. And then here I just put both through at the same time. I take both of the strings that are hanging loose, put them both through, pull them all the way. Oops all the way and tighten so if you wanted to do the pull and push that's fine if you wanted to pull you would um, go with both of these first two strands and pull underneath those the other method that I use and as you might have noticed your hands maybe don't work with a cord the same as my hands, and you have your own way of doing things, that's great. Figure out what works well for the way your hands would like to tie knots. There we go. Now, we're just going to ignore this short one. But see how we needed it for that knot? We don't need it anymore. Later on, we're going to cut it off. Next, we're going to tie our, our Father knot. So we just did the Hill Holy Queen. Next is Our Father. So we do our four strands around, bringing our string all the way through, and tightening our knot. And give yourself some space. This one I just kind of eyeball between the Hill Holy Queen and the Our Father, about the same. And next we will tie three Hail Mary knots. And between the Our Father and the Hail Marys, we want space again. I just eyeball these ones as well. Good. Next, we want two more Hail Marys. Keeping the distance between them similar to the distance we did in tying our original Hail Mary knots. We only have a few more to go, well, maybe a handful more to go. And then we're done, okay. Next, we want this final Our Father knot. And after we tie this one, I will show you how to make the cross, which is all just a bunch of knots. As you can see, five knots really close together. Now when we do our knots for the cross, we'll give ourselves space just like we've been doing. We're going to tie our regular three times around knot. Pull our string all the way through. Tighten your knot. Space looks pretty even. All right. Now, when we tie our next knot, we're going to try to tie it as close as we can to the one we just tied. Pull your cord through. When I tighten this knot, I found that it helps when I go to tighten it completely. I twist around this first knot and it seems to help get the second knot
closer to it. I do that with each of the ones that I tie for the cross. So you see you want them as close as possible. Tie our next knot. It's just a series of our regular three knots. We want five total. We are on number three. When I tighten this, again, twist these around. It seems to help get this one closer. Tighten it. Get as close as you can. Fourth knot. Now we only have a few left. Twist it around, get it nice and close. And last one, that was four. We want five all together. Twist them around. And sometimes it helps when I tighten my knots to hold on to this, oops, hold on to this string and pull against the knot I just tied. Okay, and five knots. That makes the body of our cross. So we've just tied these five. Now what I'm going to do, and this is just to save string, you don't really have to do this. The knot that I'm going to use for the first side of our cross I tie it at the bottom here and I give myself just enough space, kind of like our Hail Mary knots, just enough space between because then I'm going to cut it off. All right. Now is when I will employ my pyrotechnics and instead of using my lighter every time to burn the edge because then I rub my thumb raw. I just use the candle. So here we go. We're going to cut off this last little bottom knot that we tied. We're going to also cut off, remember this short piece we've been ignoring? We'll cut that one pretty close to the Hail Holy Queen knot. Be really careful you don't cut off this string because I did that one time and it was very sad. Right. I like to keep my scissors close because after I burn the edge, so this little tuft, this fuzzy piece, that's what we're going to burn. Um, some people just burn it and then leave it. That creates a little bit of a bulb, which is fine, but I like to press it against a flat surface. The material is going to be really hot though, so it can't just be any surface. That's why I like to use my scissors. I push against the scissors and it creates a nice flat smooth area. When you're burning that be careful of this string that it doesn't get close to the flame because it will burn the string. But because this is a nylon material it turns into almost like a plastic. We're going to burn this little tuft. Remember when we cut off our knot there? We'll burn the edge here. and. Press it against the scissors. You can also use like the bottom of a glass jar if you want to push that against it. Um, sometimes I go back and just smooth the edges out against the flame. And last, almost last one. Okay. This is going to be our final not. So this piece is going to go through an opening here. We're going to twist this string and see how it brings the twine apart. We're going to push this one through. We're going to bring it past the first, second, and third knot in between right here. So push this through your opening. Some people do it differently. This is just the way I taught myself. Um, so I keep doing it this way. 
Now pull it nice and tight. And what we're going to do is tie one more knot on this side and that creates the other side of our cross. Same kind of thing three times around. So if you're holding your tool, this is going to be this side. You're going to hold it against this side and tie it around this side. Then we tighten our knot against the side of our cross as much as we can. And if it's not completely tied, it's a little bit flimsy. Sometimes that happens. You can try again or you can keep it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And now we cut off this end string. These scissors are super old, but I refuse to get rid of them because I've had them since I was like in elementary school. Now I just burn the end of this cord so it doesn't come undone. Because, as you might have noticed, if you ordered the cord that is pre-cut, you have a pretty good amount of string left. I use that at the end um, to make what I call single decade rosaries. They look like a little chaplet, uh, which I can show in another tutorial. We burn the end of the knot we just tied. Maybe smooth out the edges, because sometimes when I press it against the scissors, it gets a little bit sharp at the edges. So um, that just makes sure it doesn't hurt anybody. All right, there we go. Your first rosary. Excellent work. One last note. If, so let's say I'm not happy because these aren't completely lined up. My knots, knots will always have a little bit of space left to tighten. So I just pull on the decade and it brings, it closes a little bit of space and it brings it up a tiny bit. So that'll also help even it out. Well, thank you very much for making a rosary with me today. God bless you. See you next time.